you know, I talked a little bit about it in passing with David Ferronis, but here's here's what I would say to some of you Dolphin fans out there about your the attitude, the way at least I'm looking at this offseason. You, you make your own choices, you know what I mean? You look at it however you want to look at it, but I think a great attitude in looking at this is understanding the big picture. Okay, and I've explained it many times. You're not going to be able to keep everybody. And you have so many free agents that you drafted the, la the this year and next year that you have to make a decision. So you're going to go for the next wave of free agents along with Tua over Wilkins, Hunt, and AVG. Okay? You'd rather go with Waddle. You'd rather go with Phillips. You'd rather go with Holland and Tua. You feel as a front office that it's more important there and you can replace these guys in other ways so we're going to find out right and and so you we really can't say that it's not going to work that's that's what i'm you know as same thing with the lineman this driscoll guy could be the next kendall lamb you don't know where keon smith is going isaiah Wynn never played like he played his seven games here in new england he played better here than he ever played in New England, and he had one of the best offensive line coaches in Dante Scarnecchia there. Okay? Austin Jackson was a disaster, unfortunately, and, you know, all that the first couple of years when he didn't have coaching. Now look at him. He's a, a, a terrific right tackle, solid right tackle, can do the job for you, an excellent job. Hell, the dude will block 30 yards downfield for you. I mean, you know, so we got to kind of take a step back. And let's let all of this develop, okay? Because you have to understand that you're not going to be able to sign everybody. So now you've made your decision that the second wave for you is more important than the first wave, okay? And if we look at the way they have filled out the roster, there's a lot of balance. You still have your stars. I mean, let, can we? you want to go over the roster? It's not like you lack stars, dude. Okay, here. I'll pull it up. And offensively, you have Waddle. You have Tyreek, right? Those are stars. Tua has been in the MVP conversation the last two years. Teron Armstead is a star left tackle. Okay, and you may not have stars at running back, but Mostert played like a star last year with 21 touchdowns. And um, what's it called? A-chan. I mean, the man was just on a sick tear. So you've got a nice opportunity here. You've got enough stars. You added Jonu Smith, who is one of the three fastest tight ends in the NFL, which goes exactly with what your, your team is all about. You have enough here. And then you hope that everybody else, including draft picks, kind of does their job, whether it's Aaron Brewer, Jonu Smith, Jack Driscoll, all the other guys that you're going to add to this team, right? And then you look on defense. Zach Sealer may not be a star, but he's a hell of a player. Hopefully, you'll get back Phillips and Chubb, which should be stars for you, especially Chubb. The way he was playing last year, he was playing like a star. You you have Jalen Ramsey, who's a flat-out star. Uh, Javon Holland, to me, is a bad mofo. I mean, he is a stud, a badass. And, in fact... For him to come back with two knee ligaments that weren't in, you know, 100%, I have even more respect for him overall. So you're going to have your impact players on defense. Jordan Brooks, I think, is going to be a very good player for you. Kendall Fuller, I think, was an excellent addition, and I love Jordan Poyer for a year here with Holland. I know he's 32, but I think he has enough in the tank. Since he's next to a young stud, it will make his life easier, too. It's not like he has to carry the secondary. He has to complement the secondary. So you have enough players to make plays, to, to stop people, to get it done. It's up to the coaching now. It's up to the development. It's up to Mike McDaniel on game day. Let's, let's allow it to play out. There are too many of you that are just abandoning ship, and you have no idea how it's going to turn out. None whatsoever. 
So let's just, you know, I, I would just tell you, I, I get your frustrations of years past. I have them too. I get your frustrations of how the year ended. I have them too. But you have to separate yourself from all of that and then start over again and see what you're doing and does it make sense? Is it logical? And is it what you need to build forward? And yeah, apparently it is because you can't have your cake and eat it too. You won't be able to sign these guys and then next year you are going to lose somebody. And you just can't afford to do that. And maybe also you got to have maybe more really good players, role players like, and maybe try to have a few less stars because if you're too top heavy, you don't have enough of the middle class and you kind of need a lot of that middle class. And I think that's what they added here in free agency to kind of bring some balance and they still have their stars.